Paint six, a little piece. Common time or 4-4 four, four time. No sharps or flats in the key signature. This is in the key of C major. Rhythm-wise, I don't say if there's a problem. It's really mostly quarter notes and half notes in the right hand and eighth notes in the left hand for the most part. I think we can handle that, I hope. Now, the first measure only has two counts in it, so it's a pickup measure. But if you'll notice the end of the second line, there's two, two counts in that measure, so that's fine. And then in the third line, there's two beats in that. That's another pickup measure. And then at the bottom, there's another measure with two beats in it. It says there's two sections. The first two lines is one section. You see the double bars at the end of the second line? And the second two lines is another section. And each section has its own pickup measure, so forth. The point is we're coming in on beat three. So let's check notes and rhythms. Well, rhythms aren't a problem. Notes and fingering then. For the right hand, you're here. That's three, four. Three, four. And right now, I'm just going to connect everything. And just reach down with the thumb. And then fourth finger. Reach up. You're moving around a little bit, but it's only like one key. I don't think the right hand's a problem. Left hand with the eighth notes, I'm, I'm just going to transfer away from finger to finger. I'm not going to hold the hand still and try and use the fingers to do this. It's just a gentle motion, and it's in treble clef here. So we're actually up here. Three and four. It's just five, four, three. Five, four, three. And they're saying this is a third major. It's okay if your hands are small enough and you can get up here to get the F sharp with the thumb. It's kind of hard because the, after the last F sharp, you got to come all the way down to G. So if you can, use the fingering in the book here. Otherwise, you got a 2 3 here. And that's a bit of a stretch. Although, if you got large hands, you can handle it, I suppose. That's a G, by the way. And then go ahead and use fifth finger there. This is measure four. You have these, and then fifth finger again. That's fine. It goes with the phrasing. Just make sure you're using five, four, three. Not that type on the finger. Don't use five and one for all of this stuff. Let's go down to the measure, it's the two beats, pick up to measure nine here. It's the third line here, F. Here you can go ahead and use fifth finger again. Because you're stretched out so much, that's okay. I would use a fourth finger on the C there in measure nine though. Now if your hand is big enough, you can use third finger on the C in measure nine. So pick up again to measure here, and then four, three, if your hand's big enough. If not, then you got to use fifth finger here, and then fourth finger, and then down. I'll leave that. I don't know how big your hands are, but I'm going to use third finger on the C here. Here. So I'm just using little finger for the A, the G, and the A. Now in measure 13, I'm using second finger on both of those. Those I have a C sharp measure 13. The last two measures, look out, it's here, and then that is an F. There's three ledger lines below the treble clef. One ledger line is an a C, two is an A, three is an F. Just memorize that note. You really need to know it. It's an F. Five, two. And I, you can do a 3-1 here, but you need to do a 2 on the last one. So can you hold the 3 down? If you can't, then you need to use 4th finger. Scrunch up. Because you need to hold that C down. It's a half note. Put the hands together here. So 
forth. I don't want to play it all for you. You can work it out yourself. It's not a fast piece. Then we can add in the slurring here. Lift up. It's like taking a breath. Now here, I don't really know about this slurring. To me, this is all one phrase here on this uh, th second measure here. I'd connect all that. I'd pretend all of that slurred together. So, and then lift up there on measure four. Lift up, and again, then in the second line there, all of that from measure six to the end of the line is all one phrase. Lift up. Like so in the left hand, you can pretty much keep the left hand just connect it all. Just no phrasing. Now, some people, as part of interpreting it, is they'll finger pedal the bottom note in the left hand. They will play it like quarter notes. That gets a bit. Uh, so you can experiment a little bit with it, but I wouldn't push it too much. I mean, if you can do it and you want to do it, fine. It, it, it gives the counter melody to this. It's like a third part, but an octave. Because I come down here, if I, if I take the top staff and I take it down an octave, it's here. See, they're in thirds. Well, it's the, left, left, the right hand's up here, it makes it a tenth, the same difference. The difference is I'm lifting up in the right hand, I'm not lifting up in the left. We want to hear the right hand, keep the left hand soft. Then the dynamics, it's soft. Whatever you think soft is for the right hand, the left hand has to be very soft, and that's pretty much soft throughout. At the end of the second line, at the end of the section, you'd come down to very soft. Here. And then when you start the third section, go back up to soft again. Don't start the third line at very soft. Come on. Then on measure 11, you get that hairpin, the crescendo, and then come back down. You're going to swell up and down. Well, look at the middle of the swell, and it's a measure 13 around the G A. Right in there. That's your loudest part. You're only going to go up to about a medium softer. You're not going to get very loud at all. So it's a... And then you come back down to soft. And at the end, you get... You come back... You come down to very soft at the end. The RIT at the bottom, you can slow down a bit. I would suggest that you only retard the second time you play it because you're going to, the last two lines are repeated. I would not retard it the first time. I just keep going and keep going. And then the second time when you're finally finishing it, then you can retard it. Like so? Yeah. The left hand is just background. You just keep it out of the way in the background throughout. And that's going to be a trick, because when you get busy, the tendency is to play it louder. You'll just automatically play it louder. So forth. So you have to consciously make an effort to keep that left hand very soft throughout the whole piece. Just down. And then speed-wise, well, he's got his German going again, but it means not fast. Don't, the tendency is to get going like I've been doing. I've been playing it way too fast. It's a slow piece. Take it. Take your time with it.
could have been a little too fast. Uh, you can play it slower than that. If the hard part for me is not speeding it up. If I'm going to start it slow, I need to be able to maintain it and I tend to want to speed it up. Well, catch yourself, watch yourself on that and try not to. You can do better than I did. I know there's all kinds of recordings of professionals that have done this, so you can go look it up. Just look up Opus 68 by Schumann, because it's a whole collection of pieces, and you'll get all of these things in here and more. You see at the top of the, under the title, a little piece, the uh, OP Opus, OP is Opus, O-P-U-S. So just search on Robert Schumann Opus 68, and you should find all kinds of recordings of it available to you. I would prefer you learn it first without hearing it. Do your best with trying to understand the music yourself and then go listen to others play it and see and compare yours with theirs and see how it goes that way. I'd like to play this very slowly just to check the, the notes. I don't think the rhythms are a problem. So I'm going to give us two counts because we come in on beat three. I'm going to go ready and go and and then we go. I'm not going to do any dynamics, but I will do the repeat. I can't do the retardando at the end because the metronome won't do it. Ready and go and. Repeat. 